After serving as CEO and team principal at Williams Racing for two years, Jos Capito has decided to step aside for unknown reasons. He's not going alone, though. Technical director Francois Xavier de Maison has also been ejected, and if we had to guess, it's probably because they're no longer needed at the Formula One racing team. But is it a normal retirement, or is there another reason behind the sudden exit? Keep watching this video for more. First up, a two-year cameo. After acquiring the team from the Williams family back in 2020, new owners Dorlton Capital thought the team needed some major restructuring. During that time, Jos Capito had already parted ways with the racing world, but the new owners made him an offer he couldn't refuse. He was tempted out of retirement and took over as CEO and team principal at Williams Racing. As soon as Capito arrived on the scene, his first priority was bringing in someone who could lead the technical side of the team. Who better to do just that than Francois Xavier de Maison? Both of these guys had a lot of synergy having worked together at Volkswagen on the rally project in the past. De Maison took over the technical side of things and decided a lot needed to be changed. He started by restructuring the technical staff, and to be honest, things started to look really good for Williams Racing. But after just two years at the Formula One racing team, both of them have suddenly been asked to step aside. It's a little shocking, to be honest, considering they were just starting to get things back on track. And the fact that Capita was literally baited out of retirement to take over the team and then sent packing home just after two years is a bit weird. Both Josh and Maison were visionaries and wanted Williams Racing to climb the ranks, but it looks like the new owners had something else in mind. Capito called it an absolute honor to be able to lead Williams Racing for a short two-year cameo and wish them success in the future. Next, a stagnant journey. We're not gonna lie, guys. We were really pumped when we first heard Josh was taking over Williams Racing. He had a proven track record having worked at the biggest teams in Formula One history, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but his two years at Williams were a bit stagnant. Well, not stagnant, but let's just say he departed having changed nothing except the staff. The 2021 campaign did bring some success as their driver George Russell finished at the eighth spot in the Constructors' Championship. Everyone thought the glory days were finally on the way, but things actually took a turn for the worst the very next year. They significantly fell back this season, finishing 10th and last, with just 8 points on the board. So maybe that's the reason why he was sacked after just 2 years. Or maybe the owners were expecting a bit too much. But what makes this sudden exit so much fishier is De Maison had been asked to leave at the same time. No one was expecting miracles and Williams Racing wasn't going to finish at the top of the championship, but it seems like the owners weren't impressed with De Maison's appointment. Now there's no way you can argue that the man doesn't have crazy expertise in simulation and ground effect, but whether he lived up to the expectations is still a question mark. There's news going around that these sackings were a quick course correction with replacements set to be announced in the coming months. Moving on, an illustrious career, regardless of how his two years at William Racing went, Jos Capito will always be a legend in the world of motorsports. He has more than 30 years of experience and started his career back in 1985 at BMW. He worked in engine development at the time and found some early success by winning the Paris Dakar Rally the same year. Capito continued to make strides in his career and ended up at the Volkswagen Group working at Porsche's racing department. He stuck around for about 10 years before finally joining Sauber in 1996, where he was given his first role on the board. It's pretty much history after that. He officially made it in 2016 when he took over McLaren. We're still not sure what his future is in the world of motorsports now, but considering how it's been an absolute reshuffling circus this year, a lot of teams would like someone as experienced as Capito on their side. And as for Williams Racing, we're hoping they're not expecting someone to step in and deliver miracles, because it'll at least be a couple of years until they finally start finishing at the top. If Capito couldn't do it in two, then we don't expect anyone to come in and magically transform the team. We're not sure why, but we think it had something to do with age. Yost is 64 years old right now, and while he's a true visionary, maybe the owners just wanted someone younger to take the lead. Now for an opening at Ferrari? When news first broke out that Capito was being sacked, a lot of people thought he left to fill the vacancy at Ferrari. Mattia Bonotto was set to part ways with Ferrari, and with a replacement needed in just three weeks. It seemed like the German left Williams to fill the gap, but that's not the case anymore. Since Ferrari is already an Frenchman Frederick Vasseur will be the new head, and in case you're thinking it's all retirement here for the German, you're missing something very crucial. With Vasseur heading to Ferrari, that leaves a gap at Sauber. Sauber is also going to be trading Alfa Romeo for Audi as a partner from 2026. If there's anything we know, it's that Capito is the perfect man to take the Sauber-Audi partnership to the next level. He has the skills and experience to make it work, and with Vasseur out, it's highly likely the guys over at Sauber will try to bring him in. But there's only one issue, his age. Like we just said, he's already 64 
four years old, and by the time the trade happens, he'll be 68. Following up, does he even want to be there? Age isn't a factor when it comes to heading a Formula 1 racing team, but old age catches up to you. And with the game evolving every single season, Sauber might want some younger with 15 to 20 years of experience to take over. Plus, we seem to be forgetting what Josh wants. Maybe he doesn't want to have to run an entire team when he's 68, or even now for that matter. Maybe we'll be hearing about his official retirement again in a couple of months. He probably just wants to chill at home, spend time with the family, and watch some racing on TV. Also, there's even some discussion going on about how Porsche might even buy Williams Racing out, and the whole reason why Capito and De Maison departed was to make way for the new management. Either way, we're not going to think about it too much since it's been a crazy year for Formula 1. We'll find out what's about to happen sooner or later in any case. Up next, resistance to change? We want to talk a bit more about the two years Josh spent at Williams Racing. Judging from things on the surface level, he did give the team an upward trajectory. They did a much better job in the 2021 campaign, and while there was a slight hiccup in 22, things did seem like they were about to change. It's much more than that, though. We're judging his performance by the team's performance, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly all right, but you gotta understand how this is an entire organization we're talking about here. There are hundreds of thousands of people working at Williams Racing, and all of them need to play their part to make sure the team performs. We can't just blame the 2022 season on Capito alone now, can we? He came in with a mission. He wanted to change the culture, and two years is far too less of a time frame to do that. There are also some rumors going on about a lot of people within the team who weren't really happy with how he was changing things around. Or in other words, there was some internal resistance to change. But it's not like this is a secret or something. Capito said it himself, and he knows he couldn't pull it off, because frankly speaking, two years is not enough to change things for the better, especially when it's a racing team. Now, not the right direction for the team. Alright, so since we've established a possible reason for why Jos Capito was sacked from the leadership role, where does all that leave De Maison? Well, this might sound a bit controversial, but we think the learning curve was a bit too steep for him. Again, we're not doubting his expertise since he's one of the best technical gurus there are, but jumping directly into a leadership role is a big ask. There was always a problem with the technical team gelling with the trackside team, but considering the limited machinery and resources, we reckon Williams Racing did a really good job, but De Maison didn't really have the resume for a leadership role yet. He did some brilliant things at Peugeot and Renault, but maybe this was a misstep. Maybe he wasn't ready for a leadership role, especially with Capito at the top trying to change the culture. But yeah, in any case, we see a lot of genuine ambition at Williams Racing, and if they're able to get the right guy who can bring everyone on the same page, the team could drastically turn things around in the coming years. And we're not too sure about Josh since he came out of retirement for this role, but De Maison will probably just find a new home since he adds a lot of value considering his technical expertise. Let's see, we'll have a much clearer picture of what's going on in the coming months. That's it from our side, folks. So what do you think? Were Capito and De Maison laid off because the owners were looking for a direction change, or is there something else going on right now? Let us know in the comments below. Remember, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos in the future. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.